Hey, my name is Milan, and in today's video we're going to discuss why UUIDs, or GUIDs in C-sharp, slow down database inserts, what you can do about it, and when is this actually a problem that you should be solving. The question that we are going to answer is, are UUIDs bad? And I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm going to be using the terms UUID and GUID interchangeably, because a C-sharp GUID is also a UUID as far as we are concerned. Now, I also wanted to mention what prompted this video. A few weeks ago, I created this infographic, and I posted it on my usual social media channels, which are YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter, or nowadays it's called X. And this particular post got a lot of attention. Just on LinkedIn, it got more than 1 million impressions, which is pretty viral as far as I'm concerned. Now, the main idea behind this post was to illustrate the difference between UUIDs and a ULIT, which we're going to discuss a bit later, and highlight the drawbacks of UUIDs when it comes to database performance. So let's first talk about UUIDs, or GUIDs, in c -sharp. A GUID, or a globally unique identifier, is a built-in type in .NET, and you can call the static method new GUID to obtain a new GUID instance. This is an example of what a GUID looks like, and if you didn't know, c -sharp GUIDs are actually version 4 GUIDs. Now we're going to discuss the specification also in just a moment, but what you need to know is that each GUID is going to contain the number 4, and this particular index in the string representation, and it's also going to contain the variant character at this index. The next question you might be asking is, what is the value behind this data structure? Why should I care? And that's a great question, which I'm going to try to answer. And what you need to understand about GUIDs is that they are entirely random. And moreover, they're also a big data structure. A GUID is 16 bytes or 128 bits. And other than the version character and the variant character, all of the remaining values are random. You can also think of this as a randomly generated 16 byte long number. And the value behind something like this is that you can use it for unique identifiers. In the .NET world, it's not uncommon to use GUIDs for primary keys inside of a database. Most databases also support this type natively and is particularly valuable in distributed systems where you need to be able to create object IDs that are also unique across a distributed system. With something like a GUID, the chances of a collision are relatively low, so it's often used in something like microservices. However, UUIDs also have some problems. So let's discuss what are the main UUID drawbacks. First of all, they slow down database inserts, and I'm going to explain why this is the case in the next slide, and we're also going to be doing some benchmarks later to prove that this is the case. Secondly, UUIDs cause index fragmentation. This is because they are very random, and indexes are sorted structures. So when you try to insert a random value into a sorted index, it's going to cause fragmentation. And the last point is that UUIDs incur higher storage costs. As I mentioned, they are 16 bytes, or 128 bits, as opposed to an integer, which is 4 bytes, or 32 bits, or a long integer, which is 8 bytes and 64 bits. So let's see why UUIDs are slow inside of databases. And for this discussion to make sense, we need to talk about B plus trees. This is a data structure that is most often used to represent a database index, and this is one way to represent it. Every B plus tree is going to have one node as the root, then we can have any number of nodes in the intermediate levels in the tree, and finally, in the bottom level, which is also called the leaf level, we have the leaf level nodes, which contain the pointers to the rows inside of our database. So what these numbers here typically represent are the primary keys inside of a database, and they point to a unique record inside of that table. Now, if you aren't familiar with B plus trees, they have a few distinct rules. And first of all, a value to the left of a node, which is a left child, has to be a smaller value than the value of that node. And the values to the right of that node are going to be greater than or equal to that value. So as you can see here, left of 69, we have nodes with 50 and 60. Left of the node 50, we have 19 and 30. Below it, we have 50, 58, and 59. And to the right, we have 60, 65, and so on. I mentioned that leaf nodes are actually pointers to a specific row in the database, and this is typically going to be your primary key, but also a leaf node can point to the next set of nodes. And these are some qualities that databases can use to improve query performance. Now, where a UUID is problematic is because it's entirely random, and a B plus tree is a sorted data structure. So when you try to insert a random value into a B plus tree at the leaf level, it's going to cause rebalancing and restructuring of the tree, which is bad for performance. And we're going to see this later when I show you some benchmarks. We also have to mention the RFC 9562 document, 
titled Universal Unique Identifiers, UUIDs, which was released in May 2024. So let's go into this document for a moment because it's important for the discussion that we are having. So this is the RFC 9562 document for universally unique identifiers. You can see that it was published in May 2024. I'm recording this video at the start of July, which is some two months later. Inside of this document, you can read a brief introduction to UUIDs. A UUID is 128 bits long, and it's intended to guarantee uniqueness across space and time. Now, I'm going to skip most of the document here, and let's jump into section 5, which is UUID layouts, and first let's talk about UUID version 4. This is the version that is implemented by the C-sharp GUID class. You can see what is the layout of the data structure here, and here are the 4 bits that represent the version, and then the 2 bits that represent the variant. And all of the other values are entirely random. But what is more important in this document is the UUID version 7, which offers a time-ordered value for a UUID. If you take a look at the layout, you can see that we have a Unix timestamp in the first 48 bits of the UUID. The next four bits are the version, which is going to be just hard-coded to version 7. Then we have some random bits, a variant, and more random bits. So a version 7 UUID offers a monotonically increasing value because it contains a timestamp and also some randomness with the remaining bits that are set to random values. And this already solves most problems with the version 4 UUID that we are presently using in C Sharp. However, as of the time of recording this video, which is July of 2024, C Sharp does not have support for version 7 UUIDs. However, there is a new feature in the .NET runtime that was recently merged and it adds support for the version 7 UUID API to the system GUID data structure. I'm going to leave a link to this discussion under this video if you want to check out all of the insightful comments that you're going to find, but I just want to focus on the new API surface and it's available through a method called new GUID version 7 and another API called new GUID version 7 that accepts a datetime object representing a timestamp. I expect that this will be released in .NET 9, so starting from .NET 9 we will have native support for sortable UUIDs. And this is definitely a step in the right direction, but what if you wanted to solve this problem today? And this is why I wanted to introduce you to a new data structure called a ULID. So what is a ULID? ULID stands for Universally Unique Lexicographically Sortable Identifier. It's also 128 bits long, so it's compatible with a UUID when it comes to data storage. It's lexicographically sortable, which means that the string representation of a ULID is also sortable as well as the bitwise representation. The string representation is case insensitive, there are no special characters, so it's URL friendly and you can expose it through your APIs. And the main benefit is that it has a monotonic sort order, and we're going to see why this is the case when we look at the ULID spec. You can add ULIDs to your code base through a NuGet package, and the API is similar to a GUID, so you're going to say ULID, new ULID, to create a new ULID value. This is what the string representation of a ULID looks like. And the first 10 characters of the ULID represent a timestamp value, similar to the version 7 UUID. The remaining characters or bits in the bit representation are random values, which guarantees uniqueness with a ULID. We can take a look at the ULIT specification in their GitHub repository. This is the ULIT specification, and I'm going to leave a link to this page in the description of this video. Now, the start here already contains the main talking points that I mentioned. What I want to talk about is the actual layout of a ULIT. So you can see that the first 48 bits are the Unix timestamp, which is the same as the version 7 UUID. And then the remaining 80 bits are random values, which guarantees uniqueness. So because we are using a Unix timestamp for the first 48 bits, we have a monotonically increasing value. And this introduces some very useful properties when you are using ULITs or version 7 UUIDs. For example, you can match a record in your database based on the first 48 bits and determine when this record was created because this is a timestamp. So you can easily find any record in your database that is less or greater than a given timestamp. And I think that being able to do this based on just the identifier is a very interesting property. I also wanted to mention the monotonicity property of a ULID. A ULID guarantees uniqueness up to a single millisecond, at which point the remaining 80 bits determine if you're going to get a collision. So technically, if you were to create more than 2 to the 80 ULIDs within the same millisecond, that could cause a collision. So far, we talked in depth about UUIDs or GUIDs and ULIDs, and this brings us to our next and final question. And that question is, what is faster, a UUID or a ULID 
when it comes to working with a database. We're going to do some benchmarking with inserting and querying from the database, and we're going to see which type of unique identifier performs better. I'm going to look at five examples or five tables in the database with different primary keys. The first table is going to have a monotonically increasing integer unique key. Then we're going to have a table with a GUID unique key, a table with a ULID unique key, which is represented as a string in the database, and then the same variant with a ULID being represented using 16 bytes. And finally, we're going to look at a fifth variant that was mentioned as an alternative in the post that I mentioned at the start of the video with a GUID or ULID primary key. However, this is not going to be the clustering column in the database. Instead, we're going to use a created on date and time as the clustered index of a database. I'm going to be running all of these benchmarks on SQL Server, where a clustered index is essentially the same as the underlying table. In other words, the way that the records are stored inside of a table is how they are going to be stored in a clustered index. So it's a very good property to have a primary key, which is also monotonically increasing. So a timestamp satisfies that quality, a ULID also does, and an integer or long sequence, which also increases by one every time you insert a new record. However, a GUID does not. So it's going to cause some issues when it comes to inserting into the table. I'm configuring all of these tables with an EF core database context, which is just going to connect to SQL Server. When it comes to the individual entities, I'm just configuring what I already discussed. For the GUIDs and ULIDs, we aren't generating the primary key value, which is why I'm saying value generated never. It's going to be created on the client side. And for the ULIT tables, I'm adding a respective converter to help EF Core convert this to and from the respective value in the database. For the fifth table, I'm configuring that the primary key is not clustered and we have a default value for the created on column and this column also has a clustered index. Now the converters are taken from the respective ULIT library which I'm going to show you right now. The library is called ULIT, it's also open source so you can find the implementation on GitHub. Now let's go back to the database context. So I just took these value converters from the repository and I'm using them with my database context. Now let me show you the first benchmark that we are going to run. We are going to test how long it takes to insert 1 million records into the database. The first benchmark is going to be inserting into the first table with an integer primary key, which is also the clustered index. Then the second table is going to have a GUID primary key. The third table is going to have a ULIT primary key. The fourth table is going to have a ULIT primary key with a binary representation. And the fifth table is also going to have a GUID primary key with a date time clustered index. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark and then let's discuss the results. So you can see the benchmarks for the insert results here and they are pretty much what I expected. Just a reminder, we are inserting 1 million records in each benchmark. And when we are inserting to the table with an integer primary key, it takes 13.8 seconds. For comparison, in both cases with a ULID, it only takes 11.9 or 11.3 seconds. And then the slowest is UUID with 21.3 and the UUID with a date time clustered index with 29.9 seconds. So you can definitely see that using a UUID for your primary key slows down database inserts. However, this isn't the only problem, so let's jump into our database where I want to show you something else. Here's a database query that you can run on this table structure to get some information about the physical statistics for the database indexes. And what I want to show you here is how our database indexes behave when it comes to fragmentation. Fragmentation is a measure of how fragmented a given index is. In an ideal scenario, we want our fragmentation to be zero or as low as possible, and let's see how the fragmentation changes based on what we use for the primary key. So here is the first table where the integer is the primary key. You can see we have a clustered index and the fragmentation is 0.37%. Whereas with a GUID, you can see that the fragmentation is 99.2%. So basically our entire clustered index is fragmented and this is because our GUIDs are entirely random. Version 7 GUIDs should fix this, but let's see what's going to happen when they get released. A ULID gives us a bit better result with 1.6% fragmentation. A binary ULID is even better with 0.76%. And the same goes for the date time column. And in this case, I want you to look at the clustered index, which is our date time column. The other index, which is the non-clustered one and is actually the primary key, is a GUID. So the fragmentation is again 99 point something percent. So what does this mean for our query performance? Well, let's go ahead and run a query benchmark and then we're going to discuss the results. Here's the database query benchmark that we're going to run. 
for each of the tables, I'm going to sort them based on the clustered key or clustered index. Then we're going to skip a given number of rows, in this case, a million rows, and then we're going to take the next 10,000 rows and return that. And we will do the same for all of the tables, the exception being the last table where I have to sort based on the created on column. And I'm just going to return the identifier instead of both values so that we don't transfer more data than is necessary over the network and to make it comparable to the other benchmarks. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark and then let's discuss the results. So here are the benchmark results for our queries. And you can see that the results are a bit surprising. As expected, the table with an integer clustered index is the fastest with 54 milliseconds to skip 1 million rows and then take the next 10,000. Also, the allocation was the lowest in this benchmark. Then we have the UUID or GUID, which is definitely the slowest of the bunch with almost 71 milliseconds average. And the allocation is not as bad as I expected it to be. Then we have our two ULID variants. The first one is representing the ULID as a string and the second one in binary format. And you can see that the binary variant is a bit faster. However, the allocation in both examples is significantly higher. And I suspect that the allocation is what's causing this lower than expected query performance. I was honestly expecting this to be almost as fast as the integer variant, considering that the values are sorted correctly in the database. And then coming in second in terms of performance is the last example where we have a date time column as a clustered index and a GUID value as, as the, and the GUID value as the primary key. It's about 61 milliseconds on average, and the allocation is the same as in the first example where we had UUIDs. So what is the main takeaway from all of this? Well, first of all, we can determine that UUIDs slow down database sensors. We agree on that. Second, they also cause index fragmentation, which I think we can all agree is bad. But at the end of the day, all of this only becomes problematic when you have millions and millions and millions of rows in your database. So depending on your workload, it really might not make a significant difference whether you're using an integer, a UUID, or a ULID. Now I'm going to let you decide what is best in your case, but as far as I'm concerned, I like having the ability to generate my unique IDs on the client side, which I can do with a GUID or a ULID, where the ULID has an added benefit that it's monotonically increasing, which is something that's important. However, in .NET 9, we're probably going to get the version 7 implementation of a UUID in the GUID data structure. So this is something that you should be paying attention to. One more thing that I like, and I think it's an advantage of ULIDs, is their string representation. I think it's much more readable and human friendly than a UUID. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and which type of unique identifier you're going to be using in your applications. Watch this video next to find out what is the fastest way to do database pagination. Check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses to improve your skills. And until next time, stay awesome.